Let's do another similar example. We now need to graph the function y equals x. Hmm, it looks pretty simple. Is that even a function? Yes, it is. It has x and y in the equation, so it is a function. So you know what to do first. We need to fill in these numbers in the chart, right? So this time I will go from minus x, um, minus 3, to 3. But Mr. O, you went from minus 4 to 4 last time. Why are you going from minus 3 to 3 this time? That actually does not matter. You could even start from minus 10 and go all the way up till 10. You'll then just have the same line but longer. We just want to know how the line looks, so you can make it longer or shorter. It's up to you. So if I start from minus 3 to 3, I'll be drawing only 7 dots this time. Now, let's try to find the y values. Oh, by the way, you may have noticed something by now. I am keep assigning numbers to x, then trying to find y values. Why am I doing that? Well, that's a deep question. And all I can tell you for now is that's how we graph a function. Hmm, maybe I can tell you one more thing. We could also assign numbers to y instead, then try to find the x values. But it's just mathematicians prefer more this way. And you'll get used to this too. Now, let's look at the first one. x is minus 3. So, according to the function above, y is equal to minus 3. Wait, what? Is that it? Yes, that is it. We already found the y value. Because look, it does say y equals x, so whatever the x number is, y should be the same number. That's what the equal sign means, right? Yeah, so this was actually a very easy question, but that doesn't mean you should skip this question, because we will need this graph later on. So. Let's pause the video, then first complete this chart. You know what to do. Now we draw the dots, just like last time. So, the first dot should be at negative 3 and negative 3. So negative 3 of x value and negative 3 of y value. So here. Let's continue. We obtained the graph for the function y equals x. You see how the line is nicely crossing the zero point? Of course, that's because we had a dot that is located at x equals zero and y equals zero. So that makes sense. Now, I have one question to you. Can you kind of guess what this angle should be this? this angle. Can you guess it? Some of you probably guessed it right. It's 45 degrees. That's because you see how whenever x value increases by 1, y value also increases by 1. 
So one right, one up. One right, one up. So it's very consistent. And that makes this graph look very symmetric. So this angle is 45 degrees, correct? Next question. Graph the function y equals 2x. By now, you should be on your third blank paper. I mean, empty paper. Now, I know it's a lot of work to make this chart and draw this graph and number the tick marks. But remember, you're in the learning process, so please be diligent and get it ready. We only got two more questions left, okay? So let's work hard. Pause the video again and please have this ready. Let's get started. y equals 2x means y is equal to 2 times x, right? So in the earlier grades, you probably have been including the multiplication sign when multiplying something, for example, like this. Do you see the problem? Now, because 2x means 2 times x, if I write 2 cross x like this, we'll start confusing the multiplication sign with the x. So from now on, I highly recommend you to use a dot like this. Instead of multiplication sign, just put a dot. That means multiplying 2 with x. Or you could even just enclose one of the numbers I would enclose x with a bracket. This still means multiplying 2 with this number, right? So try not to use a multiplication sign anymore, okay? So I'll erase this x because we know the value. What, what should that be? 2 times minus 3 which equals minus 6, right? So y is equal to minus 6. Why don't you try to complete this chart on your own first, then compare with my chart. I hope you got the same chart as mine. Now let's graph it. So, what do we have here? We have a line that looks a bit steeper than our previous line. This is obviously more than 45 degrees angle. Take a look at this one and this one. Do you see the difference? Well, we'll come back soon and let's move on to our last question. Our final question. Graph y equals 3x. Now it's 3x. Can you guess what will happen? Let's first create this chart and the graph again. But this time for our graph, you see how my y-axis is longer than before? You'll understand why I did this when you start graphing this function. So for now, just make sure you have the tick marks for the numbers from minus 9 to 9. 
Okay. Now, are you ready to calculate? Let's do this. Oh wow, the line looks even steeper. And do you now see why I asked you to have the y values from minus 9 to 9? Anyway, we're now starting to see a pattern. Here, I collected the three graphs except our very first one. We'll get to that very first graph in the next session, but look at this. As the number in front of x here increases, the slope of this line becomes steeper. Slopes tell how steep the line is. So here's the thing. The first one, it's like we have y equals 1x, but we just didn't need to write down 1 in front, right? Because we all know that 1x is same thing as x. In mathematics, we say that this line has a slope of 1. This line has a slope of 2. And this line has a slope of 3. The numbers that are multiplied at the front of x are called the slope values. So, Whenever you see a y equals something x function, you can kind of imagine how steep it should be. If we have like y equals 10x, hey, this is going to be 10 times steeper than this first one. I would like to assign you a homework now. How should y equals minus x look? Try from x equals minus 3 to 3. So use 7 dots to graph the function. Then let me know what you think through the comment. I'll show you the answer at the beginning of our next session. We'll talk about the intercepts next time, which will be our last topic of graph for grade 8. Next, and next time, you would want to have a special type of notebook ready. It's called a grid note, where the notebook doesn't have lines, but rather have grids. You see how they have squares drawn in here? So it's easier for us to make a graph. It's not a requirement, but it, it will save our time a lot. So I recommend you to buy a grid note. I hope you learned a lot from this video and I'll see you later.